from Stettin in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind that line, by all the capitals of the ancient states. First, you'll have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes. You'll know when it comes. We hope it never comes, but we must get ready. It looks something like this. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you were not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. As the Cold War escalated in the years following the Second World War, two nations sat on edge, horrified of a nuclear war that could erupt at any time. For the first time, the world feared an enemy that, without warning, could end everything. The Cold War was a conflict of differing cultures, Russian and American, communist and capitalist, Western and Eastern. Both world powers were desperate to prove that their culture ranked superior. And yet, in April of 1958, just months after the USSR launched Sputnik, a terrifying loss for the United States, a Texan from Fort Worth walked out of the Moscow Conservatory a victor, a Russian declared victor. The admiration the Russian had for him was like none seen before, and it held the power to bridge the seemingly endless gap between the two opposing nations. <laughs> In 1958, the USSR hosted the first quadrennial Tchaikovsky International Music Competition for young classical musicians. The competition was created with the goal of showcasing Russian superiority in fine arts. Some of the best young classical pianists and violinists from around the world were brought to Moscow to compete. Among them was Texan Van Cliburn a 23-year-old whose music career was just beginning, but whose love for the piano started at age three. Van Cliburn was taught the piano from a young age by his mother. He then moved to New York where he studied piano at the Juilliard School of Music. It was during this time that Cliburn came to embrace his homosexuality, something that hardly hindered him, but would soon become an obstacle in the more prejudiced Russia. Clavern was fascinated with Russian music and architecture. Because of this, learning to play the required Tchaikovsky music for part of the competition was no obstacle. As the competition neared, Clavern was not considered a threat to the Russian competitors who had never heard his name. Because of this, it came as a surprise when Clavern illuminated the concert hall with his music in the first round of the competition, a round which many of the more recognized players were able to bypass. As the competition progressed, the concert hall filled more and more seats. And why? So that the people of Moscow could watch the tall American pianist. After all, he had become the surprising new talk of the town. Clabberin's homosexuality was suspected by some at the competition. A call was even made to the FBI from Russian intelligence regarding it. However, due to Clyburn's resounding new popularity, nothing was made of the accusation which would have otherwise ended the career of a Russian pianist. In just a few days, Van Clyburn ascended from unknown pianist to the most famous and liked American in the USSR. This was something the world had never seen before. Russians setting aside their Cold War bias to cheer for an American. Clyburn played with a style that was far beyond that of his competition, and it showed. Not even the Russian, who was previously the top pick for the competition, could compare. Not only did Clyburn play the best, he played well enough to shatter the bias that made other American competitors think that they could never win. After much debate, both political and musical, Nikita Khrushchev 
the Soviet leader made the executive decision to allow the judges to cast their votes without political pressure. In the final round of the competition, with an encore lasting eight minutes, an American won the first international Tchaikovsky competition. In the height of the Cold War, Van Kleiber won the first international Tchaikovsky competition. Not only did Clyburn win the competition, he was viewed as a cultural hero. Upon his return, Clyburn was honored with a ticker tape parade down the streets of New York City, an honor never before given to a musician, much less a classical pianist. He was also featured on the cover of Time magazine as the Texan who conquered Russia. He became known as the American Sputnik, and was adored by both Russians and Americans alike. And yet, they're very sincere as a people. As a matter of fact, I couldn't refrain from telling them that they're very much like Texans. If a Texan likes something, he'll tell you, and if he doesn't, he'll certainly let you know. Van Cliburn became an unlikely cultural ambassador between two powerful nations at a critical time helping both the United States and the USSR to reach a compromise. Citizens of the countries were able to experience the culture of the other while setting aside their differences. The opposing country, for the first time since World War II, looked a little more like a friendly face than a violent one. So what happened after that point um, was something like the world has had never seen and likely will never see again, um, because it was beyond the classical music world, it went totally international. Um, he became a household name, of course, in the U.S., definitely in Russia, um, and remains that in Russia. In November of 1958, a dinner banquet in honor of Rildia B., Van Cliburn's mother, was held by the National Guild of Piano Teachers. At this event, the founder of the guild announced a $10,000 donation to be a prize in a new competition. This competition would bring classical musicians from around the world right to Fort Worth, Texas. And it would be called the Van Cliburn Competition. Cliburn toured the US and Russia with his music, continuing to inspire young musicians in both nations, playing for every US president from Eisenhower to Obama. He also played for Russian leaders including Gorbachev, the Russian who brought about the end of European communism. I think you know by my constancy how very deeply I love Russian people and your culture and your art. And you, you go with me always in my life. And it is for both my beloved president and for you that I'm so happy to do this. Thank you. Van Cliburn passed away in February of 2013. However, he still lives on in the spirit of those whose hearts he opened to change. Van Cliburn was a reminder to the world that despite our differences, we can still enjoy our similarities and compromise on our cultural overlap. And we'll have, out of 30 competitors, we may have 15 countries represented from that. And they come together and they're all just in love with music. It's not, it doesn't matter where they come from or you know, what their experience was leading to this point. This is something that is in constant need in our world as negative current events and hostile foreign policy dictate our views. Luckily, every four years, Fort Worth becomes a cultural mixing pot for musicians, just as Moscow has. Good music is something that everyone can relate to, despite bias. The message that Van Cliburn sent to the world was one of timeless relevance, one of peace and one of music.